what's good people it's your boy animal i hope you're well thank you for joining me um today is my first proper tutorial video i'll be doing it's gonna be a basic beginner's guide to fl studio i will try and be as in-depth but keep it easy to understand let's get started so when you open up fl studio this is what you'll be presented with various windows here it may seem a bit daunting at first but once i go through it hopefully you'll have the confidence to be able to make your own music so i'm going to be going through quite a lot of options settings trying to cover everything to make a song start to finish in this video i will try and leave timestamps in the description or the comment section but anybody who's viewing more than welcome to put your own timestamps in there where you feel relevant so I'm going to start from the file menu here, first of all. And if we go to the template section here, FL Studio comes with a lot of preset templates. So you can pick from different styles of music and what will be included within that template. You can also, as it says here, change your default template. I will show you where they are stored because you can create your own templates which will be very useful um, for you in the long run. I'll go more into that when we um, start creating a project. Obviously, you've got your open function, your save, import and export. Your export function will be for when you want to render your song or bounce your track as these different type of um, file formats. Obviously, you've got your standard edit functions, cut, copy, paste, undo, add, to add your various plugins within the step sequencer or the channel rack as it's called in FL Studio. Your patterns, so these will correlate with each pattern you create here. Views, so you've got your various different windows here. Currently we've got the browser in view, your channel rack, the playlist, this one, and the mixer here. So if we click on view, you can view any of these from here as you can see there's a tick with each window which is visible so if we untick the browser that will then be removed bring that back it's back in view don't know if you notice here you'll see these light up as well so i'll get to these in a moment but they're also your windows and shortcut views to those so you've got all your views here your options now this is where i'm going to go through the various settings here to configure fl studio so it works for you if we're going to the first setting here midi settings now if you have a midi controller this is exactly where you'll be setting up your midi controller so once it's installed you should see it under the input and output it won't work straight away once you plug it in it will be recognized but fl studio needs to enable the controller so what you do is you click on the controller you have and then you select this enable radio button here so once that's enabled you will see you can play your keys on there now if we move over to the audio tab you've got your device here which is your where your sound input and output comes from fl studio comes with an asio driver if you have an audio interface it will also be selected here as you can see i've got um, a focus right audio interface so i can also select that one if i'm going to be using it directly with that but if you don't have an audio interface you will just be using your normal speakers that's connected to your pc or laptop so under this asio panel here this is where you configure your inputs and outputs under here we've got input and output and it states as it's the default input what the default input will do or default output is whatever you are currently using in windows it will select that input or output device if you want to always specify which input or output you've got for example if you have several devices i.e a webcam and i mention a webcam because that has a microphone and your mic you will see that listed under here you can also have your speakers output here so for example if you've got headphones plugged in as well as some speakers you can select those here with the buffer length here so the way this works is if it's on the smaller size buffer length 
that will give you the best or the quickest latency, I should say. If you press a key on your MIDI controller, for example, or when you're listening to your music, it will be as close to real time as possible. What happens is if you, when you start loading plugins in, it will then start clipping. If your system can't handle it, you haven't got enough RAM or CPU power, you can then increase this buffer length. So it will take longer to render the sound but you will not get that clip in. So we'll leave this at default for now. Under your mixer, the resample quality here, that will determine the quality of when you are in your project. So that won't be your rendered quality, that will be what you're listening to. So again, if you are struggling with the latency on the buffer, you can reduce the resampling quality and that will then reduce the, the clipping issues you're having there. If we move on to the preview mixer track, now this is for when we will listen to any sounds here, anything you click on to audition in this browser will come through the selected mixer track. Now by default, it's set to the master channel. And again, that also applies to the metronome, which I will come to shortly. If we move on to the general tab here, you've got various settings. And again, this is where you can look at your default template. So you can select your default template here. Also, you can select the type of startup project. So whenever you launch FL Studio, do you want it to be an empty project, your default template, or the last used project? If we move on to file now, this is where you will add extra browser folders. So if you have an external hard drive, for example, and you've got some sounds on there that you want to add, or you've got a folder on, on a different area of your system, you can add the location in here. So you can actually type or paste in the location, or you can click this folder and navigate exactly to where you want click OK. And as you can see, it's appeared here. This backup function here is a lifesaver. I would definitely recommend setting this as frequent as possible. It will store it not with your project file. It has a backup location. So if we move on to the project, this is everything to do with your current open project. Now this data folder correlates with any recordings, any chops you might do, any splitting of audio files. As it's set to none, it will save to FL Studio's default location. If you select auto, because we haven't saved the project yet, it hasn't done it. So if you save the project and then select auto, this will populate into that folder. So any audio you record will go into there. So your time signature is here under the info tab. You can title your music here. So this will be your MP3 metadata. You could put your title there, obviously your name as the author, the genre. And there's this radio button, which states show info on opening basically means every time you open your project, you'll have a little window pop up and it'll tell you the title, the author, and basically anything that you've got populated in here. So now that's the settings. We're going to move on to the other functions on here. So you've got your master volume on this controller. We've also got the pitch. So the master pitch on here. And if you see this window, it's called a hint panel. Every time I go move on to anything changes. So just letting you know what you're hovering over. This is to separate between pattern and song mode. This will make more sense as I, as I progress with this. Obviously you've got your play and pause function, your stop, which will go back to where you started, your record function. So when you hit record, you'll get a pop-up and it says, what would you like to record? Audio into the Edison audio editor recorder. That will be a separate plugin where the audio will be put into the audio editor. You can manipulate it from there and then drag it into your playlist. I will go into that into detail on another video. You've got audio into the playlist as an audio clip. So if you don't want to make any changes to it within the ed editor, you can just record and it will start recording straight into the playlist. You've got notes and automation. So when you are playing your uh, keys on your controller, that will record when you're playing and everything obviously means all combined. So once you've got it armed for recording, if you hit play, it will begin recording. Under here, you've got a countdown timer 
and if you right click on this it will give you one bar or two bars. Next to the recorder we've got BPM, so your tempo. You can either click and drag under any element or you can right click on it, select a tempo or you can type in a value. You've got your metronome here, so this comes into play when you are trying to record under your MIDI controller and if I just hit play here you'll hear the MIDI, you'll hear the metronome, sorry. A metronome can be changed, so you've got your hi-hat, the tick, beep and the cowbell. I always prefer the hi-hat. And as you see that's coming through the master channels, which is the preview mixer channel we have seen earlier. You've got wait for input to start playing. What that means is when you're recording, it won't start recording the track until you press a key or it detects any trigger. So we've got blend recording. That means when you are recording your MIDI, it will loop if you've got this loop recording on and it will add to your current MIDI sequence. Here we've got typing keyboard to piano keyboard. Now this is great if you don't have a MIDI controller. What this does is it converts your typing keyboard as it says into something that you can play and press keys with. So if I add some keys, now if I press the keys on my keyboard, you can disable that by turning it off. This scrolls to each marker so if you, when you are playing something, um, if you want it to scroll along with you here while you're, um, so if we just increase that, what the scroll will do is just move along like this as you are playing your track. This is your snap to grid. So currently it's set to line and this will apply for when you are in the piano roll or this playlist editor. Now you've got your patterns here. So the way you compose a song in FL Studio is you create patterns and then paste those or paint those into the playlist which is this window here so you create your pattern here so if we right click on this rename this to a kick you can also set the color here as well we can put the color let's try blue so we can set that as the kick pattern You've also got your playlist, as I was saying, on your view options. So if we click on this, the playlist will go. This is your piano roll. You can enter your MIDI sequence in here. See, it will pick up the notes in there. You've got your channel rack under this one, your mixer and your browser plug in here. The browser's got various options here. You can move into packs folder and these are where all your default sounds will be that you can create with your songs now you can audition them by just clicking on them or you can use your keyboard and run down them if you want to use a kick that you like you just click and drag. You can either click and drag it and replace it over the current kick up there, or you can click and drag and either drop it above, below, or even in between the kick there. And that's how you add any sound on here. So once you've got your drum, let's say, we'll make a basic drum pattern here. We're on the pattern section here, and if we press play, I've got the metronome turned on there, so I'll turn that off. If you left click, that will enable these steps. And if you right click on them, it will remove it. Obviously, this is only four beats. If you want to increase that, you can click and drag the window. If you want to create a specific size, you can just increase it by clicking and dragging here or right clicking and setting how many bars you want and now we've got a kick pattern you can select the kick here or go back onto the playlist if you click on this icon here select the kick and you've got various tools that you can use here again you've got your snap 
here that you can set. If it's set to main, this is your main one here. So you can choose to apply this to both the playlist or the piano rolls or on here. You've got a pencil tool, drawing tool, which will allow you to pencil in. You can left click to add and right click to remove. You've got a painting tool. So if you left click and hold and drag to the right, it will keep pasting them. And again, if you hold the right click, it will get rid of it. And you've got a delete function here, a mute, etc. the cutting tool selection tool zoom and playback so with the playback if you click that and you can just hear a section that you've got once you've got a pattern in there so if we've got our kick here now and we want to paste in or paint in the pattern you can also move these patterns anywhere you like however it's always best to stay organized and keep it on the single track that it's on so to stay organized we can right click on this track rename right kick and let's select the same color and that's all changed now so we know that that is our kick track we will now want to add a snare so if we click this plus icon it's going to create a new pattern we can label this snare and i'm going to keep this to the same color because we want to color all our drums the same we're now in the snare pattern so to move up and down you can just click on on that and drag up or down. So if we move back to our packs and hear a sound, you can also use the snare from here. If you click on the sound, you've got a different uh, menu option that pops up for that sound sample. If you click on the web file, it will audition the sound for you. So let's find a snare. I like that one, we'll click and drag it and put it over it. So we're going to use that snare. So if we hit play on this, you can see we're only hearing the pattern at the moment. So once we paste this pattern, so again, click this to enable it or click it here, and we can then paste our snare into the playlist. If I now click onto the song, we can hit play, and this will play what we've painted into the playlist. If we want to add some hi-hats, we can add a hat in there. If we go on to here and put hats, and again, color this the same. You can also color your sounds here so they correspond with what you want. Right click on those, rename and color, again with this. And it's always best to stay organized just so you can see what you're doing there. We've got our hats here, so you don't necessarily need to use individual patterns for each sound. You can add them. So you, with the hats, there's a great function here which fills the steps for you. So just right click on that and you can fill each two steps. And the reason why it's not populated the rest of them here is because we haven't selected the amount of bars that we want to use. So by default, it's set to one bar. If we go to two bars, that will enable those. And if I go fill each two steps, that will populate that as well. So if we now play the song, that's only playing those. Okay, let, let me change buffer length. As you hear, that's probably crackling. So, and I'll also, as I showed you, change the resampling quality. There we go. So, we've got this pattern here. Now, what you can do is, once we've added the hats here, if we paste our hats in here, and hit play, so while we're in this channel rack, while that's playing, you can see on the timeline where it's hitting those steps. So if we want to add another sound, you can add your sounds on here as you're going along. And like I say, right click to take it off. Now you can also adjust volume and panning from here. 
So the right dial is the volume. It's set at 80% by default and we can turn that low. So you can adjust the volume from there or if you click on the sound, this also corresponds with the other dial. So if you see the other dial is also moving. What we can also do is send these to the mixer. As you can see, you've got channels. If we click on the mixer, you can see whatever's selected is playing through those. So if we name this one the kick, which is under the kick, you can identify easily that that is the kick. If we've got the hi-hats here, you can name your hi-hats. And we've got our open hat under this one. And we've got our snare under this one. You can also change which mixer track it's on. So you can move it along. You can also click here and drag. You can right click and type in the value. You can also click on any sound that doesn't have a mixer track. And if you click this track button, it will send it to a mixer channel with the name and the color that's applied. And it will send it to a free mixer channel that's not in use at the moment. Now you've got your drums here and you're able to send them to the mixer. You want to add some piano to it, for example. So we can go to a new pattern. So you click this plus sign and you select any one of your plugins. I recommend going through each sound, seeing what, what they do, what they like, but we'll just use the keys for now. As you can see, you can open multiple instances of the same plugin. However, um, this will put some strain on the application and you may get some clipping. If we right click on the plugin we're using and go to the piano roll, this then opens up this window. You can key in, by left clicking, again, you've got the same tools here, so you can use your painting tool. I don't recommend using the painting tool unless you're kind of making a hat roll, um, but you can use your pencil tool, click and drag in your notes. And again, if we wanna click on a pattern, this will play what we've got and we'll be able to see where we are on the step. So we now have some keys under the piano. We go back to our playlist, select the piano and put that in there. Again, select the song. If you have a sound effect that you want to use, for example, let's have a listen to these. Let's try this one. You can either click and drag it under here and that will apply it when you hit on the step sequencer there, or you can click and drag it into the playlist. That will add it as you can see an audio file here rather than within the channel racks. You can use this panning here. It gives you the percentage up on the top left. And that's how you change that. So once you've got your song here, for example, you've got your snare. Let's go back to your snare here on channel four, which is this channel four here. It sounds a bit dry. You want to add some reverb to it. So under your mixer, you've got 10 slots per channel on your mixer. So under your slots, you'll see you've got different plugins compared to your plugins in the channel rack. So these are effects under here. Now you've got your EQ under here. So if you want to EQ your snare, we go to the snare pattern, go to pattern, you'll just hear the snare. Same way if we were in song and we could hear the whole song, but you just want to hear the snare, you can right click on this radio button and it will turn all the other channels off. Now the reason you're hearing the piano is because we've not put that under a mixer channel and that's all coming through the master channel again for the sound effect as well so if we move this to a different channel 
and same for this one. Now you're not hearing those because they've been routed to their own channel and not into the master channel. So we're on our snare and we're going to add some EQ. And here you can see your EQ. This, this window is resizable. You can click and drag it like this. You can double click on this and it will maximize it. Like I say. So you can use these various points to make your adjustments however you want. Now we've got the EQ on there. We want to give it some reverb, some echo. So we go on to the reverb and immediately you can hear the difference. You've got various presets on here. You can click on the preset and select, or you can actually cycle through them with the arrows. If you find something that you, you like, you can then make different changes on here. So your dry signal is the raw sound that's coming through. So that's the full audio sample. The wet signal is how much reverb you're replying to it. So if we remove all the dry, that is just the reverb. And then if you add the dry on there, you'll hear it start getting thicker. and then you can reduce the wet as well. And this is also great for when you're creating sends and buses to add reverb to multiple sounds so you don't have to keep loading the same plugin. If we remove that now, let's reduce the dry and wet signal and put this back on. You can right click back on there and it's created a sound there for you as well. You can add various different effects to each of your mixes. And for example, we're at a point now where we want to export our song. So if you want to export your track, you click file, export, and you've got your WAV or MP3 here. Once you've named it, I always ask for a name first and a destination, and then hit save. You can then select either multiple formats here or you can select the one so if we originally did a WAV we can go to mp3 now you'll notice different options appear here so if we stick with the WAV you can change the bit depth here I recommend using 24 you can pick whether it's stereo or mono and your resample quality I would always recommend picking the highest one possible it will take longer but you will get a better sound quality once it's rendered. You've got other functions here, such as the mode. So do you want to do the full song or do you just want to render out the pattern you've created? And the tail is when the track finishes. So do you want it to leave the remainder, which means if you have any um, reverb on there, so some echo, do you want that to continue? Or when the bar finishes, do you want it to cut the remainder? or again, wrap the remainder. So if you're going to create a loop, do you want it to be able to loop around? Um, once you've configured all your settings here, you can click start. And that notification is to let you know it's rendered. So we can close our application and save this as well. That's closed. And you can see on the desktop, there's the song. And there it's playing. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I've covered everything for you to have the confidence and knowledge to get started on making your music. If there's anything I haven't covered, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like me to cover. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.